if you're a female, specifically a plus size female, I would love to know your opinion on this topic. So I was recently talking to a guy when we were talking about grocery shopping and he was talking about grocery shopping at Whole Foods. And he's like, all that organic bullshit. And I was like, it might be organic, but it is healthier for you. And his response was, I only recommend eating healthy to people who need it. I'm not one of those people though. I'm already slim. <laughs> And if you know me, if you follow me, if you view my pictures, you know that I am in fact not slim. I love when people like automatically, I mean, I understand that you're probably going to go off of like, oh, he called himself healthy because he's thin. Therefore, because I am not thin and I am fat, I am unhealthy, which is probably true for the most part i mean generally speaking and also i want to put i want to pick a bone with people that think that organic food in general is better than non-organic food it just depends on what foods you're talking about i know some people that will spend double or even triple the amount of money that i will spend on food and they're getting maybe i don't even know like five or ten percent more benefit to compare to me like i don't know about you guys but i don't have the kind of currency to drop down like an extra dollar on a banana and the banana is like literally not bbc size i don't care i'm going to the store and i'm buying the biggest thickest most juiciest banana like the double stacked bananas the ones that you can literally just like swallow in your mouth you would you would struggle to fit it the whole thing in your fucking mouth i'm double stacking bananas i don't care that they're gmo'd i don't care that somebody injected like I don't even know, like, trend baloney in that shit. I don't care. I'm eating that shit because I know it's cheaper, and guess what else, dude? It's thicker. It's beautiful. It's magnificently massive. So it depends on what you're going for. Like, for me personally, I don't really need to focus too much on, like, really, really organic food. As long as you're eating, like, in general, good quality foods, like whole foods, like foods that you can go to your house, make yourself, actually try to put something together, then you should be pretty okay i know some people that go out of their way though in mid max and they buy the bread with protein in it and they, it's got the guy with the mustache on the front like david's bread or something like that and that bread's like literally like nine dollars in some places and I'm, I'm buying the dollar bread i'm buying the dollar 50 bread i don't care i'm I, why does it matter it's bread to me like it's slightly less it's slightly more calories but again like what are you like 10 15 more calories dude i'll make it up in someplace else it's not that big of a deal for me so if you want to be a person that mid-maxes, I'm sure you can find a lot of value in organic foods. But for me and most people, especially, you know, here in America, organic foods are a nice thing when you're rich. Maybe. I don't know. Not even when you're rich, probably. Because you're probably still eating terrible foods regardless. Like, <laughs> one thing I often see is when people say, like, oh, yeah, I only eat organic food. Dude, I literally saw you post on Instagram three days ago. How about how you went to Mickey D's and got three QPs? What the fuck are you talking about? Like, sometimes it's I to fuck up your diet. But don't sit here and try to act like you're better than me because you buy seven dollar bananas that are literally like one fist size dude get your shit together i just saw you body slamming three three qps last night okay don't lie to me but uh yeah he's probably shading you a little bit dude he's causing he calling you a little bit fat which is i mean you're fat you're fat you're big if you view my pictures you know that i am in fact not slim so when he said that i was like hmm what you got it you you know what that means you gotta get in shape you should probably be prioritizing the diet a little bit making sure that you're getting good nutritious quality food in your diet if you're fat as fuck then you should probably get into get into shape what does that mean and so i said the size of your body does not indicate the status of your health that's what you said oh, i ain't talking to you after that dude oh man dude that's crazy bro yeah jim saying this that's crazy, dude. Yeah, it's really interesting how, like, the fat acceptance community has really indoctrinated people into believing literal bullshit. The size of your body does not indicate this, the status of your health is... It, it's not that it's not true, but it's also like it can be true and it cannot be true. If you're somebody and you're obese and you're going to sit there and tell me that you're you're healthy or like that fact that you're obese is not going to indicate any type of health consequences, you're dumb. That's a factual statement. There ain't no other way to say it than that. Or like somebody literally bleeding out of their fucking arm. Like their arm is missing. They're holding it in their – they're holding their, their right arm in their left hand. They're going – I can't, my arm is off and it's bleeding, but they go, but I'm in perfect health. Obviously not, right? Like there are certain indicators that you can definitely go to that would tell you that this person is not in good health. And being obese is one of the things that is definitely going to indicate those things. So you can say that it's not a direct indicator in the sense of like, sure, you can find somebody that's very, very thin and they could also be having major health complications, but because they're thin or maybe the, the illness that, in which they have is ambiguous, like maybe cancers or other types of illnesses. Sure, those people, you may not be able to immediately identify those things, but 
if you're obese, 100%, I can identify those things. Like, I'm literally seeing the harm putting on your body right now. I'm, I know. I know for a fact you are. And if you want to if you want to sit there and argue that, please, I would love to argue that. <laughs> I would, Because, you know, that is really just an uphill battle for you. And I can just literally look down at you and just <laughs> spit facts at you all day. And he said... Yes, it does. True. And I said, no, it doesn't. They're both, they're both correct. Like it does and it doesn't. Like it just depends on where you're looking. So like I said, it could be ambiguous or it could not be ambiguous. He's right, especially if we're talking about obese bodies. Like you guys are literally talking about, I mean, you guys are literally the gym. You guys are talking about being fat. So he's right. If you're obese or fat, that is an unhealthy behavior. That is something unhealthy, negatively affecting your body. You're, it's literally a negative passive ability going off, ticking down at your health bar. So yeah, dude, 100%, he's right. And he said from an athlete's point of view. Not even an athlete's point of view. From a general point of view, if somebody is obese, it's not healthy. Yes, it does. And I said, no, it doesn't. There are plenty of plus size athletes out there that are healthy. Name like what what plus size at bug? I, I would really love to know what she when people say plus size, the terminology needs to change. I'm sick of hearing plus size. Plus size is literally nothing. I don't care. Okay? Like plus size in what way? Like, are you gonna look at a guy like, I don't know, half Thor B. Jordanson when he weighed 450 pounds? He was not healthy. That's a factual statement. He even said it himself. Like he literally went to go lose weight so he can become healthier because when he weighed 450 pounds even though it looked like he wasn't fat which he did he had abs right if you're 450 pounds and you had abs that's crazy but he had abs and he still decided to lose weight because he literally said that it was unhealthy for him to stay at that that body size even though he's like six foot nine or six foot ten or something like that so even on those particular scenarios like yeah even guys that look like they're not the, the, even guys that look like they're not unhealthy are incredibly unhealthy. What at what particular athletes are you talking about that are plus size that are a healthy? Like, please, please, like certain bodybuilders, maybe like even those guys are really, really unhealthy. I, I, I would really love to know what athletes she's talking about. So then he starts talking about BMI and he's like, people that are overweight have a higher BMI and they have higher risk of heart disease, cancer, blah, 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 blah. Like he gives me this quote from the fucking internet. Isn't that where you're getting your shit too? Like, okay. All right. I don't know why you would quote, like he's getting some bullshit from the internet. Isn't that where you get all your information too? What are you learning this from? Like <laughs> you going to like the, the library and getting it off a of roller decks. And I'm getting pissed because it's like, read the room. Maybe like, who are you speaking to? read the room so like if you if you're in a conversation with somebody and somebody obviously thinks that you're incorrect but you think that somebody shouldn't say something because the room it's like is giving off don't don't tell me the truth right now what are you talking about man what do you mean read the room <laughs> what i am a plus size person so everything you're saying from here on out is talking about me i don't think that should matter like what do you like what, what what is this like what is this gonna insignify to me so i shouldn't talk to you about the problems that you may or may not have because this conversation may offend you because you fit into the category of which i'm talking about that is a very 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 crazy thing to say dude so like nobody should ever say anything about you because it may accidentally like it may infringe upon your ability to take offense from it what well they really think about that conversation point dude do you see how dumb that is dude that is that is ridiculous this is why people like this don't have friends because how the fuck am i always gonna know what is and what is not gonna offend you that is ridiculous man so like all right man whatever man dude do say whatever you want and so i was like the BMI system has been debunked by nutritionists, personal trainers. This person probably knows the baseline fat acceptance talking points. And it, it's very obvious because it's like everything here is like very surface level, which I guess is way better than the people that like invest literally their entire lives in understanding why the BMI is bad. And the guy that invented it was like a superficial racist dude that like probably punched penguins in his backyard. Like he was like literally beanbagging them or something like that. I don't know. Like it's. It's it's very very rudimentary shit. Doctors, dietitians, everyone. That's fine. You don't have you know what's what's really great about the BMI is that you don't have to use it. You can just look in the mirror and see that big gut 
and go, this is not something I want on my body. This is negatively affecting my health. Even if you didn't want to look at the BMI, you can 100% just go to the doctor and ask the doctor. If you go to a doctor and you ask that person, hey, am I unhealthy because I'm 300 pounds? They 100% will go, yes. If they do not, that is not somebody you should ever go to. That is like the litmus test to see if those people are actual doctors you should go to, okay? Like, if a guy says that to you, leave. That's not a doctor. That's like some kind of facade. That's like a, an illusion of a doctor or whatever. You are unhealthy if you are fat or obese. I mean, depending on how obese you are and depending on how fat you are will, will determine those things and also how much durability your body has to be able to withstand that kind of like torment that you're putting it under on a daily basis. If you're like 10 to 15 pounds over, 20, 30 pounds over, I'm sure you're probably okay. You're probably suffering little to no illnesses at all. But even at those weights, like you're pushing literally extra body weight on your on yourself for no other reason than just because you like eating food. I never, I never think that's a good idea because you should probably be trying to make your body as acrobatic as possible so that way you don't suffer as much trauma as you would have if you had that extra 30 pounds on it. Like think about walking upstairs and then having an extra 30 pounds on your body. Not good. Not good. Not doing anything either. Like it's like literally stacked like carrying like three cases of 24 packs of water up the stairs every single time you walk up the stairs or even walk down the street. You're just carrying those around with you, which is crazy. Uh, why would you want to do that? You're literally just, it, it's not necessarily unhealthy. It's just like, you're just making your life ass, progressively ass for no reason. But anyway. And he's like, no, it hasn't, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so like he, does, he doesn't have points. Like you can't, so you could perfectly recite what you said, but when he has to say a point, you just go blah, 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 blah. Being overweight is not healthy. True. And I come back with the size of your body does not indicate your health again. True, dude. Just recite exactly what you said. That's 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 honestly what you do. You don't actually have points. You just say, nah, it's been debunked. Oh, really? What, what do you mean? Like, how has it been debunked? No, no comment on that. No, no comment on how. And then also the size of your body. So you didn't even actually... You didn't even actually address what he said. Like, if you're obese, then you're unhealthy. And then you go, the size of your body does not indicate your health. That's not actually addressing the actual statement that's just saying a blanket another blanket statement right next to it that's like somebody going like oh i ate m&ms and you go m&ms are gay like oh, okay yeah but like that's not really that doesn't really address what i said you know i don't even know if that was the right scenario but regardless because there are people with eating disorders body dysmorphia mental health issues that are thin it's very disingenuous it's like the it's like the comment of like oh well, guess what? Like, oh, even though you're fat, like fat people, thin people also have the same illness, illnesses. Uh, and you know what? Like people need to eat. You know, food is food is a necessity. So people should eat. And then you're looking at a 450 pound person huffing and puffing, literally stirring eggs out of breath. And you go, yeah, I mean, sure, it's totally a necessity to eat. But this person is literally eating four times more than what they should eat in a day. It's like it's so crazy when people say that. So it's like, yes. People do suffer from mental health and body dysmorphia and then other things such and so forth that are related to that. But that's not – that shouldn't be a case for you to completely disqualify all the health issues that come with being fat. That's really, really crazy. Like what do you, that you're, at that point, you're just gaslighting people into believing that even though this person is very, very unhealthy due to their weight, it shouldn't matter because – then people also suffer from same issues. But you're completely ignoring the averages. Like if somebody is very, very fat compared to somebody that is very, very thin and they're both suffering from, I don't know, an ED or whatever, does that take away from the fact that the person that is that is very, very obese is maybe suffering for way more other things besides the ED or the body dysmorphia? Like is that – like why are you ignoring that? Like it, it, it's, it's very relevant. And he comes back, well, those people aren't healthy either. And my response is, but you are assuming that because of their size, they're automatically unhealthy. And he I'm not assuming anything. I know for a fact they're unhealthy. That's a factual statement. I don't even know how you can debunk something like that. It's not It's not even like I'm assuming. If I look at somebody that's 250 and they're supposed to be 160, that's an extra 110 on top of whatever their their, their body weight is. Yeah, that's unhealthy, bro. That's 100% unhealthy. You're literally just walking around with an extra almost whole person on your body at any given point in time. So, no, it's not a good thing. He's like... Nine times out of ten, if people are overweight, it's indicative of their lifestyle and their shitty eating habits. Yeah, that's pretty true. I mean, that's a fact. I don't even know who you is. You arguing with a guy that knows what he's talking about sounds like, and you just like you're just coming back with just bullshit. Like the BMI is bullshit. You can't. You're not actually even saying anything. 
You're, you're just like, oh, you're just speaking from emotion at this point. Yeah, dude, 100%. Um, if you are obese or fat, and this may not necessarily be a bad thing. People eat suck dick food all the time, and that's all right. Like, you know, you know you'll catch me eating a QP every month or two, and that's all right. Like, it's okay to have a pizza. It's okay to have a, a burger. It's okay to have things that are not the best, necessarily speaking. Every once in a while, you're, everybody's going to have, like, bad eating habits, but you should be trying to, as much as you possibly can, alleviate those things or at least mitigate them as much as you possibly can so yes it, you can have like a shitty diet and you can also be okay with that like it's fine to have a shitty diet and be fat as long as you acknowledge that it's a problem um that's all it is it's like being a drug addict like if you're ign if you're ignorant about the drugs being bad for you then you're more likely to do that but at least if you can acknowledge that stuff that's way better that's way better because then you can acknowledge yes this is bad but i'm going to continue to do it that's way better, in my opinion, than not knowing what you're doing to yourself. And so I told him, I'm stepping away from this conversation because I'm starting to get irked. And he's like, why would you be getting offended right now? The fuck? I said, I don't fucking know. Maybe because I am one of those people you're talking about. Like, that's a good way of ending a conversation right there. I don't know because I'm I'm one of the people you're talking about. And you're you're talking about the people on the other side with him. So like, isn't that is he not? It's just, you know, what this comes down to is like she's acknowledging. She knows the truth, but she has these talking points in her head. And sometimes in conversations, okay, if you really know your talking points, if you know like all the main stuff of your ideology, which is like, okay, the BMI is bullshit. You can't equate, you know, body mass with, with, uh, correlating health effects. There's no correlation. There's no causation, whatever the fucking bullshit is. You can sometimes get by in arguments by just reciting those things. And they, that's all you need to do sometimes. And this goes for like anything. Like if you really know, uh, your main talking points, all you really need to do sometimes is just recite those talking points over and over and over again. And what tends to happen though, is that uh, that does eventually collapse if you ever meet somebody that understands those talking points and knows how to debunk those talking points because all you do at that point is just keep reciting and that person's just going to keep debunking it. You can only say those things a few times before that person goes like, why do you keep saying the same shit? I've already like, that's, we've already talked about that. That's like not, a, that's not relevant. But sometimes you might get a buy, you might get by with it. It's like arguing a point that you know you're wrong about, but you still win because you had the better argument points. But um, because sometimes not sometimes talking to somebody, they may not be the best equipped to talk about those particular things. But uh, yeah, you could tell that the guy that she was talking to obviously knew what he was talking about, and she got very emotional and she left the conversation, which is fine. Um, I have that problem too when I'm in like, especially when I'm in relationships, I tend to leave conversations um because I get very emotional, I get flabbergasted, I get ooh, you know, it's I get I get really caught in my ways and stuff like that. Um, not that I'm ever wrong, I'm never really wrong about anything, but I know that sometimes I get emotional. I'm like I, I have to leave the situation because otherwise I'm going to call you like a, a bitch and a cunt and it's like obviously not the best thing for me to do. But anyway. Oh, maybe because I am one of those people you're talking about. Like, what? You see me. You see my body. Like I also don't agree with the idea that you shouldn't talk about something about somebody because they're they fit a part of they fit a part of that group that to me that just is screaming like you don't you just like put yourself in a box and anytime somebody you put yourself in a vacuum of I don't want to hear any other opinions. And then when somebody challenges that, this is like this is exactly what I always say, bro. These fat acceptance people are always in their own box. They're always in their own box. And in that box, they're just hearing like reflections. Like they say, oh, fat phobia, diet culture, my butt cheeks are way too big and guys don't like that. They just hear that over and over and over again because it's just constantly reflecting off each other and they just consistently yes queening themselves. And because they say that, they never actually have pushback so they never have a chance to develop their talking points and have argument points and have the ability to argue those points, right? So when somebody from the outside steps in and argues with them or says something to them that they may not dis they may they may agree disagree with they collapse like a pile of croutons because it's impossible for them for the argue because they never had a scenario where they ever had to argue and the way i always like to look at anything you do in life like it's confined it's really fine to as you go through your life adopt different ideologies everybody should have like a toolbox of things and things that they believe so that way when different circumstances come up you can immediately counter these things with your toolbox your toolbox understanding of in the sense of like you should understand a lot of different ideologies okay don't just strap yourself to one thing always have multiple things that you can you can pull from right and never I always say never really like double or triple down on something because like if something does come up and something changes, then 
it's probably not good. Like, obviously, you can probably double down on, like, you know, being obese is unhealthy. But if somebody said something like, oh, well, how do you feel about, like, how do you feel about this guy going to jail? Like, how do you feel about this? And I, I'd always go, uh, well, uh, you know, I think that if he's going to jail and he did the wrong crime, then, yeah, it's probably a bad thing. But if he didn't do those things and it's got proven otherwise, then I guess it's okay. Like, that's usually, you don't, like, back yourself in a corner. Because, like, a lot of people will do this thing where they'll go, he's just a bad person and he's a terrible, disgusting man. And he did that and he did that. But then, like, when the, when the results come out, it's like, oh, he didn't do any of that stuff. Well, then suddenly people are going to look at you like, wait, hold on, bro. You literally were, like, shitting on this guy for, like, months and months and months. And then it turned out that he actually didn't do it. So, like, oftentimes, like it's really good to preference some things sometimes with, well, I believe this, but if something else came out, then I wouldn't, you know, it's like me with capitalism. Like a lot of people will sit there and go, capitalism is the worst thing on the planet. It's, it's like the worst. It's like, it's terrible for like upward mobility or whatever the fuck. I always prefer, I always say that when somebody asks me like, are you a capitalist? I always go, yeah, I'm a capitalist. But if there was something better, I would choose that because I would, that's a factual statement. So I never like try to latch on as much as I can. Like I always preference it. Like I would choose something better if there was something better. If you knew I think obesity is bad, flat out. But if you know something that I don't, I would love to hear that. Because for all of time and for all of what I know, it's always been bad. But if you have information to disprove that and being obese is like completely fine and beautiful and amazing, then yeah, fucking tell me about it, dude. I need to know. Because like for all of time, this has never been a thing. And suddenly you know the answer to these questions. Like, I would really love to know this shit. Like, can you please bestow us upon that information? So what tends to happen is these people like never really have argument points because they never really need to argue. Like these people should be realistically taking your points and like throwing them at the wall of another person and then seeing whatever sticks. If your point still stands at the end of that statement, then okay, your points are probably still good. But if you throw your shit at that, that person and it comes back right to you and it's worse, then probably change your ideology or change the way you think about something because that shit's not real. Like you fucking suck at conversation or like that, 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 that talking point was not a good talking point. Like, you know what I look like. And so I said that to him. And he was like, well, I was not calling you overweight. You're it's a really bad dude. This woman is like actually terrible if she thinks like this. You can't talk to me about this stuff because I'm fat. And if you say that I'm fat or you say that being fat is bad and I happen to fit into the fat category, that makes me feel bad about myself. Dude, get the fuck over it. You're an adult. You're literally in a car right now, okay? You did your makeup very badly today. It's, it, you can do, you can handle it. Trust me. If you can't handle basic communication where somebody is disagreeing with you, how did you make it this far in a career, in a life? How'd you get a car? How'd you do any of this shit? You're making it personal when it doesn't need to be. What? Hold on. Well, I was not calling you overweight. You're making it personal yeah. when it doesn't need to be. Yeah, that's exactly true. You are making it personal. Just because you fit into like, bro, that'd be like somebody talking about like civil rights to a black guy and the black guy goes, well, you can't fucking relate because you're a fucking white man and you'll never understand. Or like talking to a woman and going like, yeah, you know, I think like babies are pretty cool people. I think I like them. And they go, well, you'll never understand what it's like to give birth and have the ability to, to, to manifest children out of your egg sack. You don't know. It's like, bro, what are you fucking talking about, man? Like I just because you're a woman doesn't mean that I can't have opinion on woman stuff in the same way that I can't have opinion on black people stuff. Like, what are you talking about? dude? That's fucking ridiculous. And you shouldn't get offended. Because you just so happen to fit into that particular stereotype or characteristic. That's crazy. That's a crazy ass thing to say. That just shows me how incredibly intolerant you are. But I really want to know what she has to say. But because he's right, you are taking it personal. This was a general conversation. And just because you just so happen to fit into that comp, that'd be like, dude, that'd be like Tesla going up to Ford, right? Or like GM and going like, hey, um, yeah, I think that your cars are like not good. I think like GM cars need to improve. And I think that there probably need to be more electric cars. And GM goes like, I can't believe you're fucking saying this. You know, I, I own GM. You know, it's gonna like hurt my feelings. Like, I can't believe you fucking said that about my cars. Like, I love Ford. Like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, you, these conversations need to happen. Don't take it fucking personal. Okay. I was like, well, I was not calling you overweight. You're like, how do you even, how do you even handle conversations in like any relationship ever? If you always go like this, making it personal when it doesn't need to be. Bitch, it is personal. How old is this woman, dude? Why should be looking like personal she's 40? Personal when it doesn't need to be. Bitch. That zoom in is crazy. It's not personal. If you were having a general conversation and you never came up as like a scenario or anything like that, it's not personal. Do you not understand what personal means? Okay. It is personal.
And I told him that. I was like, well, it's very much personal to me. You might not have said it. You can't have conversations about this. Like, that's just what it is. You literally can't have conversations about this. You have an in, you have an inability to take anything, uh, any type of criticism that would or would not even be about you and somehow make it personal. That's not, you're not a stable person to have conversations with. Just flat out. I would not want to have a conversation with this person because this is like flat out telling you they can't have conversations about this shit. Directly to me, but you're talking about people like me, which means you're talking about me regardless. That's a dumbass fuck. What? What, dude? What are you talking about, man? That'd be like me having a conversation with a girl and going, yeah, you know, I just like personally speaking, um, I just like women that maybe are a little bit melanated or I like women that are like ethnically ambiguous, like women that maybe have a little bit more lip capacity or something like that. And a woman comes up and goes, well, I'm one of those women. And it actually makes me feel really kind of bad knowing that you're objectifying me in this particular type of way, even though I asked you actually what you like in a particular type of woman. So I don't really like that. And it's very personal to me that you would attack me in this particular type of way. And I just go, uh, yeah, well, like I wasn't doing that. You just like asked me that question. You asked me like what my preferences were and stuff like that. So I was telling you that I'm like a snow bunny and stuff. So I thought that maybe this was like a regular conversation, even though you like, you brought it up, right? Like you, we were having this conversation and I thought that it was okay with you. I guess you can't, I don't know why you would even have try to have this conversation with me if you just were going to take everything personal like you understand how ridiculous that is like if you act, it, it, what you're basically saying is like because you fit into this category you find it impossible to have a conversation about this because you're always going to take it personal that's terrible that's literally terrible that's never going to work ever so if you said it or not i was like every viral video i've ever had people are always commenting on my weight if i post something controversial she's projecting od this is a random guy right you don't even how do you, okay, so like, what does that have to do with the guy though? It was like, every viral video I've ever had, people are always commenting on my weight. If I post something controversial, I could literally say the sky is blue and people would tell me to go eat a salad. True. I, I literally can't win regardless of, of what I say. So I told him that, I told him that, right? In a voice note, all he said. And then I would have said, okay, well, what, what does that have to do with anything? Like, what are you talking about? What, okay, like, I'm sure that you, people tell you to lose weight, that's fine, but what that got to do with me like i thought we were just having a conversation why do you what are you doing right now why are you projecting so hard these insecurities on me when i said nothing about that i didn't even bring you up personally so how could it be personal if i never brought you up in the conversation personally if anything you made it personal by bringing yourself in it and that shows me how insecure you are about your weight this woman's dumb i literally can't win regardless of of what i say so i told him that i told him that right in a voice note all he said was all right yeah I do that too, bro. Oh man, sometimes it's so bad because like when you hear somebody say that bullshit, when you see when you hear somebody say this absolute hogwash of a statement, right? And say that's just bullshit. Everything she just said right there was literally irrelevant. It had nothing to do with the conversation. It had absolutely nothing to do with the whole I'm taking it personal. It has nothing to do has no relevance to the conversation. At that point, I can really hear somebody go, "Okay, because you can't you can't argue with this point. You can't you can't make conversation with this person anymore. This person is actually incapable of critical thought on this particular topic. Therefore, not feasible anymore to have this conversation. I don't want to do it anymore. It's literally, I'm literally losing brain cells. I'm literally losing time and effort. I don't need to contribute this anymore. All right, fine, whatever you say. Cause it's like, what am I getting from this? Nothing, it's literally impossible. There's no way I'm gonna convince her. She's stuck in her ways. She's stuck, it is what it is. That's what you gotta do. And I know it sucks sometimes. And this, let me tell you something. Manipulation tactics 101. If you want somebody to really get upset, you always do the okay, or you always leave them on the one word message because that shit is terrible. It doesn't work for me though, because I don't really care. And then the next day, the next day he comes back and he tries to talk about it again. He was like, you were getting heated, so I True. didn't want to talk about it. I True. didn't know you had issues with this kind of thing. I True. wasn't talking about you, da, da 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 And I, in the end, I told him like, I have done years of work to dismantle the fat phobia that has, that society has placed on me. I have done years of work. You can't dismantle systemic fat phobia that's been put on you personally. That's not how that works. It's systemic, right? Is that not what she said? Well, the fat phobia that, has, oh, that society never. has oh, put on Oh, yeah, never mind. Yeah, so what she said. Society has put onto her. So she's saying it's systemic. You can't dismantle. You, okay, whatever. Based on me, I have done years of work to rearrange the disordered eating habits that I've developed. I have done years of work to be confident in my body, to love my body, to... All for nothing. All for literally nothing because you collapse like literal a pile of croutons because a guy said, if you're fat, you're, you're, you're unhealthy. 
Can you believe that? You did all that work. For what? For literally fucking nothing. Because the moment somebody tests you on it, you collapse. Really think about that for a second. And also, I want to also point out, none of what she's saying is relevant. It's all completely irrelevant. It's all feeling based. It has nothing to do with the conversation. And it could be okay if you're in a relationship with that person and they go, I want to tell you about how I feel. Okay, tell me about how you feel. But I'm going to keep it a buck. I hate it when people tell me about how they feel and it has nothing to do with what I said, right? I really do not like that because it's like, if you want to argue with me or you have a problem with something that I said and you approach it with, well, you didn't say anything necessarily wrong. That's where it ends, right? Like, I, okay, I didn't say anything wrong. So, like, why are you coming at me? Like, I understand you might be emotional on this particular type of topic. But, dude, like, you only get a certain amount of leeway if you're saying something ridiculous, right? In this particular topic, this woman is literally just flat wrong on everything. And when she tries to counter the arguments, she just has talking points that literally make no sense or are not relevant to the situation at all. And she thinks that somehow that's going to make her win the point or, like, somehow morally grandstand on shit. I don't care that you add... Uh, body dysmorphia or like you felt this particular type of way about whatever the fuck that is completely irrelevant given the fact that we're having a conversation about is fa is being overweight or being obese negative to the health i don't care that you work through dismantling your own fat phobia or like society's fat phobia that put why is that relevant to the situation at all what does this have to do with the conversation at hand it's irrelevant i put it in my body to love my body to show my body like i'm not about to let this conversation in your opinion about fat people in general sit on me you know it dude this woman is literally she is actually telling us that everything that she believes in is meaningless to her because think about how she managed to do all this stuff to dismantle all this stuff and then still feel the same way that she does not have any points can't argue anything and then when somebody does bring it up to her she collapses and he was like well i wasn't talking about you true. like if i would have known you had issues with this stuff i wouldn't even have brought the conversation up true. but i was like but you true see that's a damn you hear what he said right there I, if I had known you had conversations, if I had known that you had a problem with this, I would have never brought it up to you. AKA, you are literally, if you had told me previously that you that you can't have conversations about this, I wouldn't have even bothered. But I didn't know that given the circumstances of like, I thought you were a person that can have conversations, but you can't. So like, he's actually shitting on her. That's like, that's somebody saying like, you are not possible. This is not something you can do. You should have just told me. So, uh, what? Talking about you, like if I would have known you had issues with this stuff, I wouldn't even have brought the conversation up. But I was like, but you did. So, you know what the argument point here would have been? Oh, man. Oh, man. You know what the conversation? Oh, she fucking failed OD here, dude. Oh, she what she should have said was, what she should have said was, no, I can't have conversations about this. But I was just like, man, there is no other way to say this other than this. Just, she got too, she got, she took it personal on things that didn't, that wasn't, that weren't personal. And because of that, she can't, she can't ever have a conversation about this, right? I mean, there's no way that she can come back from that actually. Cause I was going to say, if somebody said that to me, because I'm definitely the type of person that can't argue things that I know about, even if it's something that negatively affects me. Right. But, uh, uh I would never put myself in a scenario where I'm going to take something personal unless somebody made it personal about me. Like, if you just want to argue about, like, basic shit, we can. But this person literally cannot. So, I, I was going to, like, try to come up with a solution to this, but there's no way to win it. At least, so, I guess she did the right thing here. Um, she did acknowledge that she took it personal. She did admit, she, like, even though she's not admitting fault here, she is technically admitting fault by saying, okay, but, like, it does, it does make it personal to me. Basically, when I get that, when I hear that, I'm hearing... Okay, I do take it personal, and I can't, I can't have this conversation. I would have known you had issues with this stuff. I wouldn't even have brought the conversation up. But she I may not see it that way, but this is what that is. She's admitting fault without admitting fault. I was like, but you did. You did say all these things, and you said them unfiltered because you didn't know I cared about them. Yeah, but that shouldn't matter. Oh, man, this woman is dumb. Oh, man. Oh, this woman is dumb. That's stupid. We're friends, right? Why does it matter if I say them unfiltered? As what were what was even unfiltered about what he said? He's talking about being overweight is a negative aspect on being uh, 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 being being fat is negative on the health, and you call that unfiltered as if that, that that's a bad thing to say. What was he? How was he supposed to filter that? What, what, he, what how was he supposed to make that better for you? You're an adult, right? Like you can't handle basic, simple criticism, not even directed towards you. Okay, and then also to sit there and go. But you said this unfiltered as if that means anything at all. 
That's all. That's literally just you admitting that you're wrong. That's literally just you admitting that you cannot take criticism, even if it's not directed towards you. So he's like, so does this mean we're done talking? And yeah. I said, yeah, this, these opinions are not sustainable for a long-term relationship. For yeah, think about that, dude. Losing friends because somebody thinks being fat is unhealthy. Yeah, not only are you going to lose friends in this aspect, dude, you're going to lose relationships. You're going to lose doctors. You're going to lose pam family, dude. Like this... The way this woman thinks is so far out of the realm of how regular people talk. Like, this woman is never going to have contact. This woman is literally brainwashed to a different degree. For me, so you can go fuck a skinny bitch. Oh. Damn. Damn. Way to fucking really... Way, way, way to really win that argument. Okay. Anyways, we stopped talking, but I would love to know y'all's opinion about it. You're wrong. You're literally wrong. This entire... Oh my God, this entire dialogue spree that she had is literally defined by her being wrong on every single point. Every single point, dude. There is not a single thing that she got right. Not a single thing. She played victim throughout the whole thing. She she gaslit. She told the guy that he was wrong without even giving examples of why he was wrong. She took it personal when it wasn't even about her. She just, and she admitted that she can't take criticism. Everything that you did, everything that this woman did, add Adrekia, you are wrong wholly on this. And you know what? That guy dodged the bullet 100%. That guy dodged the bullet. He must have dodged a whole fucking machine gun. A whole machine gun of dis just disgustingness that you emanate. And not only that, I think that this particular line in which you think is not only going to negatively affect the relationship you just had with that guy, but relationships for the rest of your life if you continue to think like this. Get better thoughts actually have conversations with people this is not a good way of thinking i've told a lot of people about this and each one of them is like yeah he's a fucking idiot oh really oh really so you just told me that you're in a echo chambers dude i mean they're great you know yes queen in it telling you that you're right no even if you're wrong i love it i love it dude and i'm like but i know oh but yeah how fucking crazy like i'm a size 16 bitch damn you're talking about me! You Damn, bro. How's she look? How's she look 20 and 40 at the same time, bro? I'm a size 16, bitch. She took everything way too personal, man. Damn, bro. That's tough. You're talking about me! You don't have to be plus size to experience fat phobia. And I think that that concept is one of the reasons why people gravitate towards the term mid-size so often. Even if they're not actually mid-size. I just made a video like going into detail about the term mid-size. But basically, the only people that actually should be calling themselves mid-size are people in that, like, in-between, between straight sizes and plus sizes. Come on, I really don't like the way that we define mid-size, straight size, plus size, omega size. Like, dude, why do we do this nowadays? We, Why do we have to, like, we have to really, like spray ourselves out we have to really put ourselves in these different brackets judging ourselves based off of the oppressiveness of how we are handled in society it's just like it's, it's so cringy nowadays it's like oppression olympics you're medium size you're straight size therefore you have no oppression i'm plus size so you know i suffer a lot of oppression but you know like i'm super omega plus size so it's like a lot of oppression right and i'll see someone who's like literally a size media call themselves mid-size and it's like that's not what that word means you could still be curvy and straight size I'm yeah 100 percent. and i say this all the time i say this non-stop when people say because this only applies to women i've never heard a dude go i'm curvy that's crazy as fuck unless he's talking about his his fucking dick and it's curving to the left or some shit like that like it's a boomerang or something but women can be curvy at five foot like five foot three 110 pounds you could be curvy it's it's more so about the body structure the bone structure and how your body like naturally curves out right some women are shaped like triangles which is okay some women are shaped like rectangles that's okay some women are shaped like you know the the curves which is fine too now when you're fat that doesn't necessarily mean you're curvy. That just means you're big sometimes. A lot of times these fat women will go, I'm curvy. You got lumps. Those are like folds. Those are not curves. So d don't get it twisted, okay? Don't get it twisted. So she's right that straight size people can. And I would go as far as to say those are the people definitively that have the most curves because those are actual curves. And it's like, that's not what that word means. You could still be curvy and straight size. I'm going to use my girl Nicola as an example. First of all, I love this woman so much. When I first saw this woman, I literally thought she was like 10. Like, what? Is, doesn't she look 10 in the face? Right? She looks like she's like 9 years old. Her body portions are so weird. But she's obviously obese. Or she's fat. Curvy and straight size. I'm going to use my girl Nicola as an example. First of all, I love this woman so this much. This woman is not... This woman is fat, right? Like, I'm not going to say she's obese. 
How much does she weigh? Does anybody know how much she weighs? She's not straight size, dude. I mean, she's curvy, but she's got the proportions that you want as a fat girl, as a fat girl. You know, a lot of fat girls want the big bust, big boobs, and so on, the skinny waist, small, small face, and stuff like that. That's the ideal body standard for a lot of fat women, and you don't usually get that because you can't control where your bot, where your weight goes. Now you could go and get liposuction. You could determine where that weight goes through like medical intervention, sure, but most people can't do that. So most women can't like you know like, just gain weight and get it in the places that they want. Some women can, but not many of them can. I do not play about her, and I think she's the perfect example of that because she often gets called plus size. She is plus size, yeah. Oh yeah. Because she is curvy and specifically has had a rounder face, but she's like a very small human being. She's very petite. So That's a fucking crazy ass statement there. To call this woman petite? Do you not know what petite is? What are you talking about? This woman's petite? What are you talking about? You don't like, what? Bro, I'm sick of these people just saying words and not knowing what they mean. This woman is not fucking petite. What the fuck are you talking about? She might be like short. But she's, bro, all right, man, whatever, man. Whatever the fuck you gotta say. Despite her being curvy, I don't think that she would actually fall into the category of plus size clothing. Again, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm like, pretty sure I'm not. You just, they, everything you just said was wrong. And so I think people that have this experience where they're not- Man, how are you gonna give off an example and the example doesn't even fucking give you, it's not even, it's not even a good one. That, that woman was literally fat and she's not petite either. You, how are you gonna be petite and then be, oh, be fat? What are you talking about? Like, societal's idea of what like being skinny and thin is but they are not like fat like me fat like plus size fat. yeah but like see that's why i don't like plus size fat is not like you didn't actually solve the problem the terminology of plus size is way too ambiguous nowadays so when you say like oh you're fat but you're not fat like me what the fuck is that what do you mean i'm not fat like you if i say i'm fat and then you have a different definition of what fat is, and somebody else has a different definition of fat is, and we're all supposed to abide by all those terminologies simultaneously. Do you understand that makes no fucking sense at all? Like, if you're gonna sit there and go, I'm plus size, and this person is 180 pounds, but you're plus size, and you're 450 pounds, what the fuck is that? That shit makes no sense. You guys gotta get better fucking language in this shit. We used to have language, we used to just call, you're fat, you're obese, Damn, you're about to fucking die. You know, we used to have terminologies. Nowadays, everybody's a plus size. What is plus size? I don't fucking know. It changes by the day. And we're all supposed to understand this shit as if it's like, okay, you would need like the fucking Rosetta Stone itself to somehow be able to understand any of these fucking terminologies, dude. They change up too fucking frequently. You know, how are you fat and you're not fat like me? What are you talking about? It's like talking to a girl and they go, oh, are you hungry? I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry, hungry, but I'm hungry. What are you talking about? What? What are you? Just fucking tell me if you're hungry. What? Uh, so they gravitate towards this term midsize, and I understand again why people use it. And because she exists in a curvy body, she does experience fat phobia. But she's still. It's just again, man. These these words just don't make any sense at all. That woman was obviously fat, and she was curvy, sure. But if a woman is like 110 and she's curvy. And she's experiencing fat phobia. That doesn't make any sense. I'm not saying that she doesn't experience fat phobia because she's curvy. I just think it's like the way we're wording these things nowadays. It's just it doesn't make sense, man. I don't even know how to like I can't even define these things anymore because you guys are you, you come up with new words every fucking week. Straight size. Does that make sense? No. Also to clarify, just because she's not technically plus size doesn't mean you can't see her as a representation. See, that's one of my problem. Like she's obviously plus size by their definitions. Right there, she's fat. That's what it, that's by definition what it is. And she's arguing this point as if that person's not fat. That person is fat. They're not petite. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, despite us being very vastly different sizes, I still do really love her and appreciate seeing her on my screen and feel represented by her. Because like, but how is she plus? What the fuck are you talking about? Your whole entire argument scheme here is that she's not plus size and she's not fat. Therefore, she fits into the straight size category, but still gets bullied for being plus size by fat phobia. But then you said she's not fat, and then you told me that you like the representation she gives you via being fat. What the fuck? What the hell are you talking about? Nothing you said made made sense. Film and TV is so specific about the bodies that they do show us and uplift on screen that any body outside of that norm is beautiful representation in my opinion. But you just told me she's straight size, so this doesn't even this doesn't even fucking make sense. 
if you want to see more fat people represented in TV, media, and all this other bullshit, and then you tell me you want to see fat bodies, but then you go, but I'm okay with this girl, even though she's straight size, when she's obviously not straight size, but you believe she's straight size, that doesn't make sense. What the fuck? Am I wrong? Anyways, again, I'm using her as an example. This is not like an invitation to like say anything negative about her or her body. I love that woman with my whole heart. Yeah, I just wanted to show you as an example that like you don't have to be plus size or even mid size. So what's your fucking she's fucking not even mid size? You're just like a straight size, dude. What are you talking? You literally are Okay, whatever, bro. To experience phobia and be man. impacted by phobic beauty standards. Like, you could still be straight size and experience all of that. I wonder if she had, like, a, a script that she was reading off, dude. That shit was fucking ass. Your whole entire thought process made absolutely no sense. I'm surprised those words were even able to, like, come out of your mouth. I, I, I can't even believe that. Nothing you said. Every, Bob, everything you said made no sense. Everything. Like, literally. All of it. I'm surprised those... I'm, you're cohesive, like you can put words together, but in that particular format, they made no sense. All right, man. Okay, here's my thing with being fat. I love the way that I look. I can look at myself in the mirror and say, I really genuinely and truly think that I look so beautiful. I think I'm so beautiful. I look like a Venus painted me. I think I'm so sexy and cute no matter what angle. Like, I look at myself like this in the mirror. And I look at that and I say that it looks beautiful because it does. Because I am beautiful. I'm beautiful and sexy and amazing. Like, truly and honestly, I look at myself and I think that. My thing is, nobody else looks at me and sees that. And that See, I don't have that problem, you know? But I don't, I don't ever look at myself in the mirror like, damn, I'll be looking good. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll whip that shit out sometimes and I'm just, you know, urinationing. And I'll look down and be like, damn. Oh, my God. Oh my god, that shit is big! <gasps> that shit is big as fuck! That's what I do sometimes. And anytime I've ever presented it to somebody else, they go, <gasps> What is that? That shit is massive! So I've never had that problem personally, just from my experiences. But that's a tough thing, man. Delusion. That's what this is. This is this is delusion. Where you think you're something. Or you know what it could be? You could find beauty in yourself. You can. I think it's great that to find beauty in yourself. Because obviously you're living with yourself for a long period of time. So you're going to have to find things about yourself that you like. Which is great. But you can't expect to other people to see those things as also beautiful. That, that, that doesn't make any sense. It's something in my nose. I don't know what's up with my nose right now. But um, when you say, I think I'm beautiful. And then other people look at you and go, ooh, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm sure somebody could think you're beautiful. Not me, though. I mean, I'm not going to be that part. I'm sure you could find yourself beautiful. Like, all that's telling me is that what you believe is probably not centered in reality. Um, You know, like, you can still find things about yourself that are really, really, you know, awesome. Like, I know that I could do this with my thumb, right? I can, like, push it back and stuff like that. Do I think that's beautiful? I mean, I wouldn't say it's beautiful, but I think it's cool. Would other people think it's cool? Probably not. I mean, probably fucking not. But then again, it's like, okay. But the problem is, like, when you're... When you have these giant macro things like beauty and you go, I am beautiful, but when I go out into the world, nobody thinks I'm beautiful, then yeah, probably like that's, you're probably not beautiful then. I mean, I don't have to tell you, like you might be beautiful to yourself, but like to the, to the wider society. Yeah. I mean, but then again, you, I'm sure you'll find somebody that thinks you're beautiful, but that's not like necessarily anything special. Look at myself. And I think that my thing is nobody else looks at me and sees that. And that's where it gets so hard to keep up that confidence. Growing up, I was always the fat girl who, you know, was confident. I would dress, I wore what I wanted to wear, you know, whatever. And that was fine. But now that I'm getting older and I'm, like, you know, dating and, like, really paying attention to what people think of me, like, like, I work in retail. I work at the cash register. I see the way people look at me. And sometimes I think, man, why are they looking at me like that? And I'm like, oh, shoot, forgot I was fat. You could just lose weight. Like if you're if you're upset that people are looking at you and they're looking at you and going, "Damn, she fat. She big. Damn." You could just lose weight. You can always just like go to the gym, get on a calorie deficit. You know, work on yourself a little bit more. Stop dyeing your hair. That shit is obviously fucking with that shit. I mean, it's really thin. But there are plenty of things that you can do to alleviate a lot of the problems that you have. And I don't think it's a good idea to get caught in, to get caught into the spew of like, "Well, I'm already so beautiful," even though nobody thinks you're beautiful. I I always say this right. You, you got to stop catering to what you think everybody else wants, and you should be catering more about what you think. Okay, you should stop catering to what you think everybody else wants, and you should be actually just catering to what everybody else wants. That's really what it comes down to. You, you're not going to – if you want to date somebody, right, is the solution, well, I know 
I know what I want, and that's probably what other people want too. No, that's not how that works. You cater to what they want. You understand? Like if they want somebody that, I don't know, is really good at analytics or something like that, then they'll go for that person, right? I don't know. The point I'm making is like stop focusing on what you like about yourself and focus on what other people like about you, if that makes any sense. Because, I mean, I know that I'm fat, but I don't perceive that as a negative thing. So always- Yeah, you don't, but the majority of people do. So that's the issue. Like you're, you're, you can't like – you can't make people believe something. Like you, you have to work within the boundaries that are set in place. It takes me by surprise when people treat me the way that they treat me. Um, it's just so difficult, and this is me. I just the rest of the world needs to catch up because it's so frustrating having done so much work on myself. And then- it's the work that you did on yourself is. <sighs> It's, I hate it when people look towards everyone else as if they're the issue. It's never going to happen. Like The way that you're looking at it is literally like, I know that I'm perfect, so everybody else needs to catch up. That's ridiculous, okay? That is a terrible way of looking at it. You can change yourself before you can change society. This is a crazy-ass way of like trying to, <laughs> to try to like cope with the fact that like everybody else thinks you're ugly. It is what it is, okay? You know, uh, you know, I don't even think necessarily that she is ugly. I just think that she probably needs. She, there are plenty of things that you can do to like improve yourself. You know, maybe stop dyeing your hair, maybe lose some weight, maybe walk more. There are plenty of things that would make you more attractive. And I know it sucks to say this, but it's all up to you. You can't, you can't bestow upon the entire society that they need to catch up. Like. Just because you think you did work doesn't mean it's work that was worth doing, if that makes any sense. Like, if you were sitting there and you went, I'm going to do all this work, all right? But the work ultimately led to nothing. Like, it was meaningless work. It doesn't mean you didn't do the work. It just means that it led to nothing. You know what I'm talking about? There are plenty of people for all of time that did things. They thought they were beneficial, and then it turns out they weren't, and it wasn't. And that sucks. And I'm not saying that you can't get value from the work that you did. I'm sure that there are things that you probably learned along the way that were super valuable. But if the work that you learned was, I have convinced myself that I am a 10, even though I'm probably more realistically a 5, then that's probably not good. Like, you got to be realistic, okay? You have to center your beliefs in, in, in reality to a certain degree. And this is not it, okay? This is not it. It's not, not the way you should be looking at it. And then other people don't do the same thing. And I get it. It's like if you're skinny and that it has less to do with being skinny and more to do with like there are societal standards, okay? Like there are things that we do that are acceptable in society and that's why we do those things, okay? And if you're outside those things, it's going to be difficult for people to cope with those that is things. It's like such I guess a privilege. You can lose weight and you can get that privilege and then you could become beautiful and amazing and all this other stuff. Not to say you're not beautiful now, like you said, but you can become more beautiful. Um, you know, why would you make it so that fat people can also, you know, be on that same level? That's not how that works. What the fuck are you talking about? What do you mean? Who, first of all, who are you talking about when you say you can't make it so fat people could be on that level too? Are you talking like God? Like, can you like, are you looking to God himself when you say that? Most people are attracted to, when people in general, generally speaking, are attracted to somebody, they're usually attracted to health identifiers, okay? So, like, when somebody's thinner, that means that they have good health, usually. When somebody has a jawline, that means that they have good health. When somebody is not fat, that's good health, okay? A lot of that stuff can be attributed when somebody's clean, when somebody shaves, when somebody wears clothes that fit, when somebody, like, these are health indicators, right? That's what people are predominantly attracted to. So when you're fat, that is not a health identifier. That's actually the opposite of a health identifier. That's actually a illness identifier. So yeah, most people are not going to be attracted to that. And I don't think it's fair to sit there and go, oh, you guys need to change for me. That's never going to happen. That's literally never going to happen. You need to change it yourself. You can't expect the world to change for you. You can change for the world though. Um, because that would be taking away from what you have or whatever. It's not about taking things away. It'd be like literally upending the entire way we think as human beings. We're literally animals. Like there are things innate to us that are never going to change. I mean, I guess maybe like if we like write different lines of code in our DNA or something like that, but that's far away. As it is right now, you can't just expect people to do this shit. You Like it, the way you're looking at it is like everybody else's problem, but not yours. Um, But it's just hard. It's just hard. I don't know if I'm ever going to be skinny. Like I, I'm pretty healthy, I think. You know, okay. I'm just fat. I've always been. Fat. Yeah, that's unhealthy though. So you're not healthy. Fat. 
I think I have a hormone imbalance. It's really difficult. Yeah, you, you have a hormone. Well, I don't know for sure. But usually when you're fat, you do in fact have a hormone imbalance. Like because you're fat. So For me to, you know, eat right. That's not true. What? I have a hormone imbalance. Therefore, it's difficult for me to eat right. Maybe you don't eat right. Therefore, you have a hormone imbalance. And exercise. Okay. Just all I'm hearing is like, I'm all I'm hearing is no responsibility. This is all I'm hearing is like, I can't, all I'm hearing is like, it's never my fault. It's society's fault. I have a hormone imbalance. Therefore, I'm gaining weight. Therefore, I don't eat right. Therefore, I can't exercise. It's never up to you. Like, you can't do anything for yourself. It's all somebody else. It's never anything you can do. Like, even through the, the realm of hormone imbalances, it's not you can't do anything to fix your situation. De oh, God damn, dude. You can't live it. What kind of life do you live where you never take accountability, bro? This is terrible. This is absolutely terrible advice for somebody, dude. You, you, you're literally seeing the delusion on this person's face. Two things, which I... Well, I don't really... Anyways. Anyways. It doesn't matter. I shouldn't have to work so fucking hard to be skinny. Nobody said it was going to be easy. Nobody said it was going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. It's not going to be... It's not going to be as easy as it was to gain weight. That's a fact. But... It's plausible. It's something you can do now. It's going to make you feel better. And then the act of doing it is going to make you feel and be a better person. So, I mean, it's literally nothing but benefits. So, uh, I would recommend it. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I like the way that I look. But the rest of the world doesn't like the way that I look. And it is, like, soul-crushing every time to get in a relationship. And people are like, well, this might be my personality, too. They're like, oh, I just don't see you like that. I just see you as a friend. You know, I just don't know. Yeah, no, I just, you're just so friendly. No, no, no. And part of it, I think, is definitely the way that I look. Yeah. Just the way that I look. Yeah, that's a fact. People don't like the way that you look, therefore they're not going to date you. That's sad. I mean, it's sad, yeah, but it's the reality of the situation. There are plenty of times where I thought, oh, man, this girl's really cool. She's really awesome. I'd love to be in a relationship with her. And then she said, no, you look like a Pop-Tart that's been deep fried in, like, bagel bits or something. It's okay. It's whatever. Like, you're not going to be everybody's cup of, cup of tea. There are some things that you can do and some things that you can't do to improve the likelihood of being in a relationship. And you just need to work on the things that you can do. That's it. That's what you can do. And I know it sucks that you do like the way that you look and you don't want to change that. But that's not how it works. You're going to have to uh, – you, you need to change for somebody else. Like, it's just what it is. And that somebody else is literally the wider society. What, do you, what am I supposed to do with that? What am I – What am I – like, what – all I'm hearing from you is literally I can't do anything because I have problems. Everybody has problems. Everybody is going through some stuff. Get into the pool with the rest of us. Do the work, okay? Improve yourself as a human being. I get it. It's hard to work on yourself. It is. It is really hard to get communication skills, to be better in the gym, to be better in, like, cooking skills. Like, all this stuff, it's hard. It, it's a lot of deliberate work. But the great thing is, if you get that work down pack, then you're a really attractive person. And it could be just basic, simple stuff. Like going to the gym and getting on a calorie deficit is you may seem like very far fetched for you. But once you get into the groove of things, it becomes significantly easier because now, you know, you can do those things and it makes you more attractive. What am I supposed to do? And even now, like recently, I've been liking somebody and it's, there's a lot of other factors that go into play. But I think what it boils down to is a lot of the time people just seem so not wanting to encourage me and this person that I like because I think because I'm fat, they just think they could never like me, which, I mean, I think there's other things that go into play here again. What? But I think that they do, or did, a little, at least. Okay. I don't think it's impossible, and other people think that it is. It's just so frustrating. Can you guys get with the program? Can you get with it? That woman has some problems. That woman has some major problems, dude. And she's going to have to address those problems with somebody. She needs, like, a therapist or something like that, dude. I don't know. I don't think I'm the person that can help her, though. I mean, maybe if she watches this video, hey, if you watch this video, go to the gym, work out, lose some weight, calorie deficit, stop bleaching your hair. I don't know. Like, there are plenty of things that you can do. Get better habits. It's not everybody else's fault. It's your fault. Work on yourself, okay? Work on yourself like everybody else. Everybody else is working on themselves. Get in the pool with the rest of us, okay? Anyway, guys. We're going to end the video here. If you want to, sorry, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do that stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. I want to thank everybody that's a member and a subscriber to the channel. Thank you so much for taking the commitment to be with me for the rest of your life. Thank you so much. You're an amazing person. I love you. I care for you. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in tree. 
because we need those things. Trees are awesome, beautiful creations made from wood and air. And that's beautiful. And I think it's awesome. They look cool. They smell good. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to break bark off of trees. I'm a bad person. What can I say? But anyway, uh, I know you're not a bad person. I know you care about the trees. Not I'm sure you wouldn't care enough to like have sex with them. You know, I, I maybe would if it was like a really hot tree. If it was like a tree that was consenting and said, oh, yeah, give it to me. I'd go, yeah, I love trees now. And I would have tree babies. Groot babies with the tree and it'd be beautiful and it'd be majestic and you're hating if you think that's weird it's not weird it's beautiful and you know what else is beautiful you <laughs> you're so beautiful you're so beautiful you're so amazing you smell so good i love the way your hair looks today the way you styled it the way that those jeans fit are you wearing jeans right now are those not jeans sweatpants oh i guess they're sweatpants take off the crocs don't like the crocs don't like them don't like them they're gross they're gross they're gross by the way um, I was just thinking about this. I think that probably you're wasting money. I don't think you need to spend any more money on your electric bill. I think you generate enough electricity off your body in and of itself to probably power like four or five different like houses in and of itself. Like I think honestly speaking, the amount of heat that you generate, you could probably just hook up like a Dyson sphere around you or something like that. And that could like generate heat for like probably the entire world if I'm being honest because you just radiate so much delicious heat. Uh, it's actually kind of crazy. Uh, you need to somehow harvest that energy because it's uh, oh, it's it's good. It's real good. You are hot, spicy, real spicy. But anyway, guys, we're gonna end the video here. If you want to check out my social medias, they'll all be linked in the description and the description of the channel. So if you want to do any of that stuff, you can enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 